All right. Well, thank you very right, much, well, Tiana. Thank you very and thank you for the invitation to speak today. Again, I'm sorry I couldn't make it in person, but hopefully the technology works out okay for us. So as Tiana said, I'm going to talk to you about some of the pre-emergent herbicide timing trials that I've been doing here in New York with one of my colleagues, Janet Van Zorn. Then I'm also going to do a brief product review as well to talk about some of the different tools we have for managing weeds in our orchards. So hopefully, let me just click over here. All right, so just to give you a little sense of where I'm from, I work with Cornell Cooperative Extension on the Eastern New York Commercial Horticulture Program. Uh, we have a couple different vegetable and fruit specialists, and I cover this northern half of the region, and I'm based out of Peru, New York, up in the very northern corner, and primarily work with the wholesale growers up in this region. So talking about our trial, we are very curious. Uh, should I be applying pre-emergent products in the fall instead of a more traditional spring timing that we've been, been accustomed to? And the basis for this work was that uh, a few of my colleagues back in 2016 did a little bit of work in this area, and they found that when doing fall applications, they had excellent weed control using a couple different products like Allion or Cazeron or a couple of these others. They also quoted here that by putting them on in the fall, it was one less to do come springtime when we have other things on our mind, like getting our fungicides and our insecticides out. And also generally in the fall, at least in the Northeast, we generally tend to have really nice rainfall that we can rely on to get those herbicides worked into the soil and get them activated. But from that study, we had a couple of follow-up questions that we were curious about. We wanted to know how do these fall applied materials, how does their efficacy compare to if we were to have put that same product out just that following spring instead. Then we were also curious, well, what if we left the pre-emergence out altogether? What if we use an herbicide program based primarily on post-emergence only? And then we were also curious, how do these three different management practices impact our overall tree health and soil quality? So today I'll talk about one of those objectives, evaluating the effects of these three different herbicide use programs on our weed species density and diversity throughout the year over multiple growing seasons and two commercial field trials. So our field layout involved two rows of New York one, or you might know it as Snapdragon. And that was on M26 in Albion, New York, or on Geneva 935 rootstock in Peru, New York. Our Albion trial was planted in 2017 and our one in Peru in 2018. And for those of you not too familiar with New York, our Albion trial was out here in Western New York, just west of Rochester. And the other trial was up by me here in Peru in the Northeast corner. Our trials had 12 trees receiving each of those different herbicide treatments, and those were replicated five times throughout our two rows at each plot. So now I'll show you our different treatments. And this was at our Peru site here in Eastern New York, and you can read down the columns here. So treatment one was that fall applied treatment. So for that one, we put out Allion, and rely, which is a, a contact material. And we put this out in November of 2021. Treatment two was our spring applied. So the exact same products, except this time it went out that following spring on April 30th. And then treatment three was that post-emergent only. So this one just had rely in the mix and that went out in May. Treatment one also received a follow-up rely application to deal with some perennial weeds that were getting a little taller than I'd like them to be. And then on the rest of this chart, you can see some of the other background sprays that we did across the entirety of the two rows. And the main reason for all of that was because we had very aggressive perennial weeds in this trial here. Looking at our Western New York treatments, very similar layout, the fall applied, the spring applied, and the, the posts only. The fall applied just had that one Allion. The spring applied had a follow-up burn down. And treatment three also had another follow-up burn down. And all three treatments also received one application of select max across those two rows as well. So now for the actual data collection. On a regular schedule, we went out 
and looked at the herbicide plots and we estimated the overall weed cover within the plots, which you can see here in these blue rectangles across the field. And then we also did the maximum weed height. So whichever weed was the tallest, we, we measured that one. And then we went out and, and put out our, our PVC quadrats. As you can see, we're, we're very high tech here in New York. And then we uh, did weed counts within those quadrats. So we counted every single weed that was in the PVC there at four different points within the herbicide strip randomly straddling the drip line. And we did these estimates twice in the early spring, every other week, May through July during the critical weed free period twice in August and twice in the late fall. So I wanna show you our weed composition by site as I think this affects our results to some extent. So here in Eastern New York, perennial weeds were really our, our most problematic species. So things like quackgrass, white campion, perennial south thistle and milkweed really dominated our plots. Whereas in Western New York and Albion, winter annuals were, were really our our trouble species. So things like annual bluegrass, common chickweed and common mallow really dominated our plots there. And again, I think that one explains why we needed so many extra treatments here in Eastern New York and also affected our weed cover to an extent as well. So there's gonna be a lot going on here. So I'll walk you through these next few slides. First thing I wanna point out again is our applications. You can see the fall had six total applications with two of them unique to that particular treatment. The spring had five and that post-emergent only had five applications. To the left of that, you can see our weed cover throughout the growing season. And you can see in blue here is our fall applied treatment cover. The orange is our spring applied and the gray line is our no pre-emergent treatment. And this rectangle here represents the critical weed free period again from May through July. And that really is the, the timing where the weeds are most competitive against our trees for water and nutrients. So that is really when we wanna have the best weed control. So when we looked at our results from across our surveys, we found that across that critical weed free period, our fall applied treatment really gave us the best weed control followed by that spring application and then that post-emergent only. And when we looked at the 11 survey dates on their own, we found that the weed cover was lowest in our fall applied treatment plots on seven of the 11 survey dates. It was equivalent to the spring plots on the other four dates. And then when we look at our post-emergent only plots, they had the highest weed cover on six of the 11 survey dates or was equivalent to the spring on the other five in Eastern New York. Now we'll similarly look at our Western New York site. And you can see here they had less perennial weeds than we did. So overall far fewer applications. You can see that fall treatment really just had those, those two treatments throughout the entirety of the season. And what's interesting here is that that overall cover stayed fairly low. But when we look at the numbers here, we found that across the weed free period in Western New York, once again, that fall treatment gave us the best weed control followed by that spring treatment, and then followed by that post-emergent only treatment. Then again, when we look at the individual survey dates on their own, we found that the weed cover was once again lowest in the fall applied plots on four of the 12 dates. It was equivalent to the spring plots on six of the dates and was equivalent to the control plots on the other two dates. And then when we look at our post-emergent only plots, they had the highest weed cover on three of the 12 dates. So I think pictures really get a point across pretty nicely. So I just wanted to show you what our Eastern New York plots look like. Um, so this these two photos were taken this October. And so on the left here, you can see this is our, our post-emergent only program. And on the right, this is our fall applied Allian. And as a reminder, this Allian went on the previous November. So this is 11 months after that application was made. And even after 11 months, we still have really great weed control within the herbicide strip. So overall, I was really impressed by the performance of the Allian in the fall in our trial here in New York. So just to sum up what we found so far, 
the fall applications of Allion provided efficacy as good or better than the same product rates applied the following spring across both of our two sites. We also looked at Chateau and Prowl, that combination back in 2021, and we found similar results where the fall application did a, a very nice job. However, I did find that that application didn't seem to last quite as long as Allen. We started to see things break a little bit by about midsummer. As my colleagues mentioned in that previous article, these fall applications can really free up that crucial time in the spring and give us more breathing room when we want to get post-emergence on in the spring. So generally now in New York, you know, we're we're definitely recommending making fall applications of appropriate pre-emergent herbicides with the caveats of where you have herbicide strips that are clean enough to get good soil contact and where you have weather conditions that are favorable post-harvest for these applications. And generally, you know, we recommend using a rotation of pre-emergent herbicides, tank mixing them with post-emergence in both the fall and late spring. If you really wanna make sure you're getting really strong season long weed control. And as you saw from our study, a post-emergent only program can be done, but we really feel it's gonna be a constant battle to be fighting those, those continuously emerging annual weeds. So, you know, making good use of a, a pre-emergent products is really critical for, for really good long-term weed control. So with that in mind, what pre-emergent products can we be using? So we'll go through some of the most commonly used ones. So as I mentioned in our study, Allian was one of the materials that we used and had really good control with. This is a group 29 material and it has efficacy on annual broadleaves and grasses. Please note that it doesn't have any post-emergence activity though. So as I mentioned, excellent fall material, but it does come with a few caveats. We need to apply this to a clean strip. Do not apply it to frozen, snow-covered, or saturated grand, ground. And there's a lot of moisture requirements with this one. We need to have no rainfall, and we, we can't irrigate within 48 hours after that treatment. But then shortly thereafter, we should have rainfall or irrigation to work that in and get it activated. It's important to know with this one that there are a lot of rate and use restrictions depending on your soil texture and your organic matter content. And we don't want to apply this to recently disturbed soils. And for to use this product, trees need to be at least three years after planting in good growing condition. And the label will warn you to avoid tree contact, including with the roots. And even though we had really good control with this material, you know, we want to use this one in a rotation in a mix with other materials too. So another product would be Kazeron 4G. This is a group 20 material. This one also has efficacy on annual grasses and broadleaves, and also has efficacy on perennial seedlings. This one's also a good late fall material and really needs to be applied when it's cold. The label will tell you it needs to go out between November 15th and March 15th, and the soil needs to be below 45 degrees. This one can be put on after four weeks after transplanting, but please note you can't use this one on peach, apricot, or plum. And um, one of the issues we have with, with 4G, I think, is that it is a granular product. So getting it applied could be a little bit trickier. This is one example of one of the machines that you can purchase to, to get it out at the correct dosage. There is another formulation, CS, that you could put out through your boom. However, talking with the company, it sounds like it's been discontinued for a couple of years. And I believe they're working on getting more of this formulation out, but it's not going to be available for at least another couple of years. So um, at the moment, we're limited to, to 4G if you want to use Kazeron. So next, I'm going to talk about Matrix. This is a group two material, and this one also has efficacy on annual broadleaves and grasses, and also has a little bit of post-emergent activity, but the post-emergence is for weeds an inch or less in height, so very limited. Again, we found this one to be a, a relatively good fall material. And your best results with this one is if your soil is moist at the time of application and half an inch of rain or irrigation occurs within two weeks of that application. 
And your space solution should have a pH between four and eight. I put this photo in here. We used matrix in a previous trial and we had put that out in the spring. And this was a few months later in the summertime. And we did have a number of ceilings coming up. And I think the potential reason for that was because it really was a dry spill when we put this on. So it's likely to me, we didn't have the water requirement that we needed to really get good activation of it. And you know, this is what we get as a consequence of that. Well, it will also say for this one, you can use this in trees that have been established for at least a year, but we wanna avoid direct contact with sensitive tissues. So now we'll talk about two group 14 materials. So these are Gold 2XL and Gold Tender, and also Chateau SW. So these are both group 14. They're gonna have efficacy mostly on annual broadleaves and to some extent on grasses. They also do have some post-emergent activity. Again, we need to be small, less than four inches in height. These both need to be applied when the trees are dormant, either post-harvest or just prior to bud break. And these products need a quarter inch of rain or irrigation within three to four weeks after that application to get them activated. A few differences between the two. With goal and goal tender, you can apply this material on newly planted trees once the soil has settled and no cracks are present. And you wanna apply it to the soil on the base of dormant trees. With Chateau SW, you can injure green tissues with this one. So the label warn, don't apply to stressed plants. Do not apply in or near non-dormant pears. And another interesting one with this one is to not treat, to not mow your treated area when green tissues are present because you risk getting the dust up into the trees, into the foliage, and you can cause some damage that way. So we wanna be careful with that material. And it'll also warn you not to apply to trees uh, less than a year in age, unless they've been protected with some type of guard. For both of these, you know, you're gonna to wanna to see the label with any other restrictions for those two products. So next I'll cover Sinbar or Turbosil. This is a group five material. This one also annual broadleaf weeds and has some post activity on emerged weed seedlings. This one's really gonna be focused for broadleaf. So you wanna tank mix this one with a good grass material. This one has pretty good efficacy in the fall. The rate that you use with this one's gonna vary depending on your tank mix combo, the age of the tree, your soil texture, organic matter content. This one we wanna to apply to bearing trees as a directed spray, again, to avoid contact with those sensitive tissues. And for non-bearing newly planted trees, we wanna make the first application only after the rainfall or irrigation has settled the soil around the base of the tree. And please note, this one is not for use on bearing stone fruit except peaches, but there are reduced rates for non-bearing stone fruit. So next I'm gonna to switch to talk about more of the grass herbicides. We'll talk about Prowl 3.3 and Prowl H2O. So these are group three materials. These are really gonna have efficacy on annual grasses and some broadleaves, but generally I recommend mixing this one with a broadleaf herbicide. We found it has good fall weed control, but rates are gonna depend on your soil and your weed species present. What's nice about this material is it can be applied the year of planting. However, the label will warrant to not apply until the soil has settled around the, the newly planted trees. And also do not allow contact with the roots or other sensitive tissues. And note that with these two products, Prowl 3.3 is for non-bearing trees only, but H2O can be used on non-bearing and bearing trees. I put this photo in here. This is from our research plot too. This is quack grass after we had put Prowl on. And again, Prowl is really gonna have efficacy on annual grasses. Quackgrass is a perennial species, so it grew right through it. So something to keep in mind, just because you have grass, knowing the difference of if it's an annual or perennial is, is really important to get good control. So next I'll talk about Solacam. That's a group 12 material. This one has efficacy on annual and perennial grasses. Again, I recommend mixing with the broadleaf material. Some of the warnings with this one, apply early spring before your weeds emerge. Do not apply after bud break on sandy loam soils. And similar to the others, rainfall is needed within four weeks of application, or you can work it in with flood or sprinkler irrigation. For this one, trees must be established one year before you can use it. 
and the soil should be settled. And similarly, we don't want to contact sensitive tissues. And this one is has a lot of specifics for the rake, depending on your soil texture. And there are, are specific tree age limitations. So you want to check the label for that. As an example of that, uh, this one is not recommended for cherry planted on sandy or loamy sand soils. And I also put this up here. This product's currently up for review by the EPA. Uh, so if you are using SolarCam and you want to get your comments heard, we can send you that website to, to put your comments in. I think the last one I'm going to talk about is curb. There's two different formulations of that one. This is another group three material, also rated for annual and perennial grasses. For this one, we want to mix with additional materials again for broadleaves and your late season annuals. This one needs to be applied in the fall post harvest when temperatures are below 55 degrees and before the soil freezes. And like a lot of them needs to be applied to a clean surface. And the rate on this one, again, is going to depend on your weed pressure and your soil types. And there's some specific language about age restrictions on the label. So be sure to look at that. So some final tips for successful fall pre-emergent applications. You know, first and foremost, scout your fields. Knowing what weed species are out there is really going to let you select the best products. So you can choose and rotate between products that will give you the best control for the weed species mix that you have in your block. We want to apply these products to unfrozen bare ground at the appropriate rate for the soil textures that you have. Generally speaking, treatment should receive enough water at least half an inch within seven to 10 days after the application, again, so that those materials can be activated and protected from degradation. We want to apply these generally with a conventional fixed broom sprayer calibrated to deliver between 40 to 60 gallons of water using flat fan nozzles at 30 to 40 PSI. And we want to apply these because they are pre-emergence before our weed species germinate. If you already do have some seedlings up, use a pre-emergent product that has some post-emergent activity or tank mix with a good post-emergent herbicide. So with that in mind, I do want to just briefly cover some of the main post-emergent materials that we have too. And the way I kind of like to split them up is between our contact materials and our systemic materials. So our contact materials are really the ones that need to contact the foliage that's going to burn that foliage and is not really going to move or translocate through the plants. So our common contacts include paraquat, like Gramoxone and some of the generics out there. This one is most effective on smaller annual broadleaves and grasses. Another commonly used one here in New York because of some of the new restrictions with gramoxone and the new training required. We've seen more people making a, a shift to glufosinate, commonly uh, sold as Rely and some of the other generics. Similarly, this one also does a, a good job on annual broadleaves and grasses. Then we have our group 14 materials like AIM, Trevix, and Venue. These primarily are going to be for small annual broadleaves. And then if anybody's growing organic, we've got a couple different contact materials there. And generally the ones I've seen either fall under the category of the fatty acid derivative products like Final Sano and Home Plate or caprylic acid products like Suppress. Then we have our, our systemic materials. So we have grass systemic materials. These are really going to be the group one products like Select Max, Post, and Fusilade. And these are really the ones that I recommend where growers are having a problem with perennial grasses because it's going to move through the, the grass and hopefully knock back those storage organisms that they have. We also have our broadly specific systemics. These are going to be our group fours, so things like 2,4-D, which will be good on most of our annual and perennial broadleaves, and then Stinger or Clopyrrolid, and that has a more narrow window of control our leguminous species and our thistles. And then we have our non-selective systemic, which includes glyphosate. Then a quick word on timing of these materials, our contact post-emergent materials. We really wanna be using these when our weeds are still small. The general recommendation is up to six inches tall for paraquat, four inches for venue. Uh, similarly for the organic products, four to six inches seems to be the recommendation. 
Our systemic herbicides, I really recommend applying these at the appropriate growth stage listed on the label for the specific perennial weed we're trying to target. So some examples with some of the problematic weeds we have here in New York. I like using Select Max on quackgrass when it's between four to 12 inches tall. For Canada thistle, I like to use Stinger between rosette up to the bud stage. For glyphosate on field bindweed, we like to recommend to use that at or beyond full bloom of the bindweed itself with the caveat that we don't like to use glyphosate past July here in New York, because we then risk injury to the trees more. So we usually like to use glyphosate no later than late June here. And then for 2,4-D, we like to use that when weeds are most sensitive to it while they're vigorously growing and before flowers appear. We've also had really good luck with 2,4-D post-harvest prior to frost here in New York for tough broadleaf perennials. We have a couple growers that do it tree to tree and uh, really do a very nice job of cleaning up a lot of the broadleaves in their sod strip. So I, I saw the talk earlier about the leaf hoppers. That could be something to try out. We really cleaned up a lot of tarnished plant bug issues in New York by using 2,4-D in the fall. Uh, so I wonder if that might work for you too. So with all that in mind, my big takeaways for the day, many of our fall applied pre-emergent herbicides will provide very good spring control when applied under the right conditions for the right weed species. Choose and rotate your pre-emergence based on your weed composition and tank mix to cover the full spectrum of weed problems that you have in your blocks. And be sure to include a burn down when you have weeds that are already emerged. And then make good use of your post-emergent materials. And again, timing is really critical for both the contact and systemic herbicides. So with that, I'd just like to thank you all for your time. I'd like to thank everybody involved helping me with these projects. And I'd like to also thank the New York Apple Research and Development Program for funding this work. And I'd be happy to take any questions that might be out there. Thank you.